So I have this 026 steel chainsaw that just doesn't want to start. It will sometimes pop and it sometimes sputters, but it will never actually start or get running. And here I'm just showing how difficult it is to try and even get the thing to pop. It does once or twice, but that's it. And I'm flipping it back and forth between choke and not choke. And when I take the spark plug out, you'll see that it's wet. So it lets me know that the fuel is getting into the cylinder. It is able to draw up fuel and uh, air. It's just not uh, igniting it and it's not causing a combustion. And then just starting with the basics, taking off the air filter and the cover so that I can get to the spark plug. And then I'll check the spark plug for spark to make sure that it's not something simple. Basically just grounding it against the metal housing of the cylinder there and pulling it over. And as you can see, there's a pretty good spark there. So I know that the spark plug, the wires, and the coil are all fine. And the next thing I did was a compression check. And these are okay to do. It, it can give you a good idea if it's low compression that there's definitely a problem in the cylinder, but if it's high compression, like here it's 130 psi, it still doesn't tell you definitively if something's wrong. Uh, and it also doesn't confirm that nothing's wrong. As you can see here, the piston has a little bit of scoring on the side, and that scoring actually seized up the rings on the piston. You're able to take a screwdriver and catch the edge of the, the screwdriver on the cylinder when it's supposed to be catching on the ring and that tells me that that ring is seized it's not pushing out against the wall of the cylinder it's you know inside the full groove of the piston and so what I think is happening is when it goes to combust and ignites the fuel in the air it all gets blown past the ring on that one side where it's been seized so at that point, I was ready to tear it down. I started by taking the jug off and uh, just removing everything on the top side, basically. And this jug is only held down by four screws. They're T25s, and you need a decently long bit to get down it through the access holes from the top. Like a T-handle would probably be fine. Uh, these were just 6 inch T25 uh, bits that I had and they worked. They, it was a tight fit but it did uh, get down in through the hole and spin just fine. So, And then here's the intake boot. There's a clamp on it. It's a little bit easier to take that boot off as you take the cylinder up. You can just pull it off of the, the front lip of the cylinder housing. And here I'm just showing the inside of the cylinder. There's a little bit of washing and a little bit of wear, but there's no scoring like there is on the piston. And I just wanted to show that. Usually when these cylinders are good like this, I'll hang on to them. It's a good backup. And also if you wanted to practice porting, you have a, a spare you can practice on. This is the original steel uh, cylinder, so I kind of like to hang on to those. Especially when they're in good condition like this one was. And there's two little clips on each side of the piston you need to take out. And there's one of the clips. The other one, the second one I took out, went flying. I have no idea where it goes. But the new piston comes with those clips and a new wrist pin and bearing and everything. It's a whole kit, so I wasn't worried about it. And here I just used a socket with a small neck to pound the old wrist pin out. And I'm not hitting it too hard. Uh, you don't want to put leverage on it and ruin any of the bearings below on the crank if you're not planning on re replacing the crankshaft or that bearing or anything else, which I wasn't. I was just doing the top side here in the jug and the piston. So I was just gently trying to tap that out because it was kind of seized in there uh, just from probably being overheated a little bit that originally caused that scoring. So. 
but then you can see it sticking up on the that side a little bit and then I had to come back with a small quarter inch extension just so I could pound it out all the way. And this is just showing the scoring. You can see there's a pretty good score mark there. And I don't know if that's caused by overheating or if that's caused by debris that got in there. But since the cylinder wall is fine, I think it probably overheated. But this, the rings you can see, like I said, got seized in there and weren't sealing on that side of the cylinder anymore. And this is just inspecting things to make sure they're still good and I can reuse them. The bearing on the crankshaft and the crankshaft itself. And then this is removing the old gasket. The gasket was pretty brittle. It was falling apart, so I'm trying to do this delicately so a bunch of pieces didn't fall down into the crankcase and I'd have to fish them out. A little bit of cleanup. This is the new cylinder. And pistons inside there comes with the wrist pin, new rings, new everything. And there's the wrist pin. And there's the wrist pin clips. And that's the piston, and there's an arrow on this one. The original one didn't have an arrow, but the arrow goes towards the exhaust side. If you don't have an arrow on yours, the uh, ceiling rings have a clocking pin on them and that cl those clocking pins go towards the intake so that's another way to think of it and there I'm showing the clocking pins each one's gonna have one that's gonna keep the the gap on the ring towards the intake and the exhaust side is gonna be fully sealed so that's another way to think of it or remember it This is putting the ring on. I got the top one on already, but the bottom one I like to come in just a little at a time. Basically sliding it on gently and trying to not break it because those rings are pretty hard and brittle. And if you try to open them up too much, they can snap. And it sometimes helps to put one of the wrist pin clips in first on one side before you assemble everything. That way you can push the wrist pin in from the other side and have a dead stop and then you just have to put the one wrist pin in while it's assembled. Sometimes they can be a little painful to put in so it's easier to do it when it's not in a tight area and uh, partially assembled. Here I'm just showing the new cylinder. I coated the inside with some two-stroke oil just for assembly purposes. And this is looking in through the intake at the clocking pins for the rings on both the top and bottom rings. Basically this is just verifying that they are where they're supposed to be and they didn't get shifted over at all. And it's moving the old decompression valve over to the new cylinder. This is mainly just so I don't drop anything in there and get crud inside while I'm still putting everything together. And then I'm putting the four screws back that hold the jug onto the crankcase. It's easiest to try and get a couple of these started and then have them hold it while you get the other two started and then you can tighten it all down once all four of them are started in their, their threads. It also helps to have a little magnet tool, that's what I'm using there is a magnet to guide the screw down to where it should be and then I can uh, position it. And then tighten these down to snug enough foot pounds. And then here I'm showing the difference before where the screwdriver was catching on the cylinder. Now it's catching on the ring. And that's what you want. The, the ring should be pushed out against the cylinder wall, not held into the groove of the piston. And 
Just reassembling the rest of the components. This is the exhaust. The muffler, actually. And there's two screws on the inside, and then there's two screws on the cover on the outside. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory if you have this model and you're looking at it. The two screws on the outside are very exposed on the bottom, and there's a hinge at the top. And then the ones on the inside are just right to the left and the right of the opening of the exhaust of the cylinder. Putting the recoil back. I managed to lose one of the screws, so I just had three at the moment. And then an after compression test. Before it was 130 PSI. Now it's about 110, 120. It kind of bounced around a little bit. There it's showing about 110. And then actually trying to start it. This is the moment of truth. You can see how much easier it is to try and get this started now. Before, it was difficult to even get a single pop out of it, and now it wants to run really well. Even though the compression is less, uh, it, it doesn't matter. It's able to run better with a better sealing ring and piston and cylinder wall.